Do you know what the greatest challenge is in raising multilingual children successfully? And by successfully, I mean that kids develop their language fully, like competent native speakers. Stay with me because I'm going to tell you what my greatest challenges were when growing up multilingual and what I permanently see and witness in my multilingual kids and students. Hi there, it's me again. If you don't know me yet, my name is Andrea and in this vlog I share with you know-how and useful material to raise your children successfully multilingual. Please subscribe and join my mailing list for more help. When I was about 17, I remember feeling the desire of going for a while to Switzerland. At the time I lived in Quito, Ecuador with my parents and although I had developed good verbal and decent written skills in three languages, I still felt like my multilingual journey wasn't over yet. I wished I could speak Swiss German as good as Spanish to be able to win the discussions I had with my dad. I sometimes felt like I had so many more things to say, but I often ended up not expressing them. Looking back, I think I didn't or I couldn't always show my true potential in that language. Back then, I already had well-developed Swiss German skills. People in Switzerland often couldn't believe I was born and raised on the other side of the planet because I had developed such a typical Swiss German accent from the northeast of the country. But could I always express exactly what I had in my mind? No. I was lacking precision sometimes, more exact words to express myself accurately. In other words, no matter what people said, I knew there was one thing that distinguished me from monolingual Swiss German native speakers, and that was the amount of vocabulary I knew. So yes, my friends, one of the greatest challenges for multilingual kids and adults is to be able to develop a wide vocabulary in all the languages. This is a never-ending story. It requires constant work. Languages need to be nourished and worked on, much like muscles. I'm going to read to you a very interesting question Mac asked me the other day. Thank you, Mac, for always being so active and sharing your thoughts with us. Andrea, as your children get older, are you and your husband going to develop goals for specific tasks, situation or categories? For example, I want my child to be comfortable talking about family or ordering in a restaurant, but don't need her to be able to talk about different kinds of plants or understand religious services. A lot of times children with languages they learn at home can become very limited in what kinds of situation they are bilingually competent in. And I'm wondering if you have a plan about either expanding those or embracing those limits. I'm well aware of this vocabulary issue in multilingual people. In school with my second graders, as well as at home with my kids, I'm always thinking about expanding their vocabulary in various directions. It's necessary to expose the kids to different topics and create situations where they can naturally develop new vocabulary. If you don't keep this in mind, it is likely that, that their vocabulary stays limited. Now, the big question is, how can you expand your children's vocabulary in multiple areas? I'm going to share with you one very useful and easy approach that any parent can use to make sure that their kids build up their vocabulary in various fields. That is the use of hidden object scenes or busy pictures. In German speaking countries, hidden object books are very, very common. If you don't know what I'm talking about, maybe the books of Where is Waldo sound familiar? The wonderful thing about these types of illustrations is that you don't necessarily need to be in a certain situation with your kids to talk about the topic. For example, it's fairly easy to build a vocabulary around the topic kitchen because you have a kitchen in your house. But if you want to talk about winter and in your country it's summer, it gets more challenging. When using hidden object scenes, 
it's enough if you both look at a picture and talk about what you see and what is happening. In the beginning, you will have to do most of the talking. Once your child gets more familiarized with the language and the specific vocabulary, you can let your child take the lead. Now, let's take a look at topics that are relevant and appropriate for children. Make sure to create a situation for your children where you can talk about the following topics. My family, my body, my house, colors, numbers, feelings, shapes and sizes at school, in the classroom, seasons and weather, transportation, daily activities, time, clothes, food, the city and vacations. I created a free checklist for you. You can download it using the link in the description. If you already joined my mailing list, just check your inbox. There are plenty of books that touch these topics. What I find very useful is these plate mats that I created with high quality hidden object scenes. I got these from Shuby. I copied them on A3 paper and laminated them. What I do is I place one of these for each of my children on the table. And when we sit down to eat breakfast or lunch or dinner, we talk about the illustrations. Every few days I change them. My husband does it in his language, I do it in mine. When the nanny comes, she does it in German. So what do you think? If you have questions, just post them in the comment section. Thank you for joining me on this video called Vocabulary Building, how to improve vocabulary in kids. Don't forget to subscribe and join my mailing list for more powerful tips. And while you are here, watch my other videos for more information. This was Multilingual Family. Keep on doing a great job and talk to you soon.